Well, the countdown begins one hour from now. A random selection of numbers may revolutionize your life in the biggest lottery ever in 44 states throughout the country. Somebody, maybe you, could win more than half a billion dollars. They've been selling 13 million tickets per hour today. So what are your odds of winning? Slim. You are much more likely to be elected president of the United States. And yet tens of millions of us have bought tickets. Even I have with seven colleagues. If you bought tickets too, stay tuned, because we're not sure that money does buy happiness. For some, it buys greed and jealousy. And yet for others, it buys peace of mind and fulfillment. So what's it like to win the lottery? It's disheartening. It's horrible. OK, clearly we have a story here. Over the course of a two-hour exclusive interview with Emily Leach, she laughed, cried, and pondered this simple question. If you had mistakenly given a, a lottery ticket to somebody, whose is it, yours or theirs? I think it's mine, because I paid for it. Let's begin by going back. Three years ago, Emily was found to have a massive tumor on her pancreas. She lost weight, moved in with her mom, and had to leave her beloved job at the VA in California. When you came out of all of that, how, how much in debt were you? Uh, about $300,000. $300,000 in debt, no insurance? No insurance. Then in January, she pops into this convenience store in Mountain View to play the lottery. Never thinking you'd win anything. Never thinking I would win anything. Oh, she won a ton, a million bucks with one ticket. What was that moment like? It was, it was surreal. Now, by all accounts, Emily has a good heart, but she's a soft touch. Did people start contacting you? The first night that it aired, I received a call from a family member that I hadn't heard from ever, um, asking me to help pay off his house. He was going to lose his house. My biological father, who hasn't shown any interest in me in 15 years, is now a good friend of mine, I guess. You gave him money? He's my dad. Right. I, what am I supposed to do? But now, here's where things start getting tricky. Last Sunday, she returns to the same store where she won her million. That's her on the shop's surveillance cam. She says one of the two guys behind her recognizes her as a lottery winner and asks for help. What is he asking for? I've got kids to feed. It's wrong of me to ask, but I really do need the help. And he's crying. How do you say no to somebody that is asking you for help, knows that you hit the lottery, knows that you're up on your luck right now? Way up on your luck. Incredibly, she's going to buy another big winning ticket. Now here comes the crucial moment. Here comes the crucial moment. Flustered with tickets, money, and on the phone with her doctor, she gives both men $100. And she says, by mistake, her lottery tickets. The mystery man on the left thanks her and leaves. Your intention was what? To give him $100. $100 bill. If anyone had been next to you at that moment, would they have thought that you were giving him a lottery ticket as well? I would not think so, no. The store clerk has reported a slightly different story. She's weaker, but right now I don't know. She buy a uh, $3 mega for two of them. Uh, she gets some uh, two guys behind her. That's a hit ticket. No more her ticket. She lied. If that's what he thinks, then that's what he thinks. I, you know, all I know is what, what I did, and I will be the first to admit that I got flustered. I shouldn't have been doing so many things at once, but I was just trying to help the guy. Oh, she helped the guy. The ticket Emily bought and the mystery man took turned out to be a $260,000 winner. This is the moment he finds out. When Emily found out this week, she filed a claim with the Lottery Commission, saying the money was hers. And that's when things turned nasty. I've experienced people calling my home, calling me a greedy bitch, and hanging up. Why do you want the money? I, I don't really. I just want him to say that I bought the ticket. I just want him to tell the truth. In fact, Emily has a deal for the mystery man. 
and we'll get to that in a moment. But first, a short diversion toward what we might call the curse of winning. Do you know who Jack Whitaker is? No. In this world we're living, it's hard to trust. Together, Emily and I watched an old 2020 story about Jack Whitaker, a big man who won big time. I was hoping I'd win it, but I never believed anybody could win. <laughs> Nearly $315 million. We won. What are we going to do? On Christmas Day 2002, Jack woke up with his stockings full of more loot than Santa could haul on his sleigh. Santa has chosen to stay in West Virginia. So how did this turn into this? You know, my wife had said she wished that she had torn the ticket up. Well, I wish that we had torn the ticket up, too. Like Emily, it began with the best of intentions. But before long, folks started figuring out one good deed. I need $68,000 or I'm going to lose my home. Deserved another. Please put a check for $185,000 in the return envelope. God forbid if Jack turned a cold shoulder. A lot of times people got angry. Everything was changing, even Jack. His marriage began to crumble. He started hanging out at strip clubs. He was in dire straits. Money for nothing when you took free. And it got worse, much worse. This is his beloved 17-year-old granddaughter, Brandy, who he showered with cash. I gave her about $2,000 a week. And cars. Four. But his cash and karma stained Brandy, too. She and her boyfriend, Jesse, both became heavy drug users. And in the course of one tragic year, he died of an overdose. And Brandy's body was discovered in a place called Scary Creek, cause of death unknown. I pretty much lost everything I held dear in my life. I got lots of money, lots of things. I don't have my family. What do you make of that story? It's terrible. It's terrible. I feel bad for him because he tried to do the right thing. And now Emily says she would like to do the right thing by offering to split the lottery winnings with the mystery man. Even so... Is there any part of you Emily, that says to yourself, I'm just going to let this, this go. I've already had a blessing. I'm going to let this one go. But I want him to tell the truth. 